Number 22. In addition to NF3, two other fluoro derivatives of nitrogen are known, N2F4 and N2F2. What shapes do you predict for these two molecules? And then what is the hybridization for the nitrogen in each molecule? Okay, so in order to find out what shapes these molecules have, and especially what hybridization, before I even say, or before I even go further, just know that when they're talking about shapes, they're talking about molecular geometry. So what molecular geometry do these molecules have? What hybridization of the nitrogen do these have? The thing is that you have to, have to, have to draw a Lewis structure. These would be very challenging uh, if you don't have a blueprint in front of you of what these compounds actually look like. So I'm just going to split this up and I will have the N2F4 on the left side and the N2F2 on the right side. And first we're gonna have to draw that Lewis structure and then we can answer the questions. So we try to make it as symmetrical as possible. If you have N2F4, remember with your Lewis structures, the least electronegative elements have to be in the middle. Keep in mind that fluorine is the most electronegative element, so it's never going to be in the middle, or, you know, very unlikely that it's going to be in the middle. So in this case, I have two nitrogens, so one and one, and I have to put four fluorines around the nitrogens, so maybe I'll just divvy it up by saying 1F, 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 and 1F. Let's draw our valence electrons. Nitrogen is in group 15 or 5A, so it's got five valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five. Nitrogen, one, two, three, four, five. Fluorine has seven. So each one will have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven single bond them up and see if those outer elements have the octet. So single bond, single bond, single bond. And then I'll put a single bond here. And each fluorine, they have the octet, right? They have two, four, six, eight electrons. That's the octet rule. So all those fluorines are good. And now let's just check the nitrogen. Two, four, six, eight for that nitrogen. So that's good. Two, four, six, eight. So that one's good as well. Let's just draw the Lewis structure for N2F2. So now I have two nitrogens and now I have two fluorines. So maybe I will put maybe one fluorine down here and one fluorine down here. Each nitrogen has five. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Each fluorine has seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, single bonded up. So single bond, single bond, single bond. This fluorine has the octet. That's perfect. This fluorine has the octet. That's perfect. But this nitrogen has two, four, six, seven electrons. So I need to make that double bond. And now this nitrogen has eight and this nitrogen has eight. So we are good. Now let's predict the shapes. So seems like if I split this molecule right down the middle, I have basically like two equal halves. So it does not matter which nitrogen you look at, whether you're looking at this nitrogen or this nitrogen, the molecular geometry or the, sh or the shape will be the same. So let's look at this nitrogen, right? Now, you probably aren't going to get this chart on your test or quiz, so your teacher or professor may want you to memorize, but I will guide you as to how to get the geometry by using this chart. So whoever you're looking at, that's always the central atom. In this chart, those are your A's. So your nitrogen would kind of be like your A, and it looks like you're bound to three other elements. Doesn't matter who they are, just you know, how many you have. So I have two fluorines and one nitrogen. So on the chart, those are your X's. So you'll be bound to like three X's and it doesn't matter, 
you know, whether it's the same kinking as you put it over here, just matters that you got three X's um, around your A. And now, how many lone pairs? Well, you got one lone pair here. So this is what you're looking for. So I'm looking for a central atom A surrounded by three X's and one lone pair. And I come to this one. Here is my A surrounded by three lone pairs and, oh, sorry, surrounded by three atoms and one lone pair. And this is called trigonal pyramid. You might see it as trigonal pyramidal, which is what I will write down here. So just pause the video if you want to have this drawing, but this is going away because I just want to say that this is trigonal pier middle. And that is the shape of the first one. Let's do the same thing for the second one. And if I split this down the middle, the two nitrogens are the same. So it doesn't matter which nitrogen you look at. We'll look at the one on the left. And just know that your geometries are always coming from a central atom, not a external or, you know, the end atom. So that nitrogen represented as an A has two uh, elements bound to it. It does not matter what type of bond it is. Don't worry about that. It just matters what the elements are. You got two elements. So that would be classified as the X. Notice how I don't care that I put a double bond here because that's not how you get the geometry. Just the atoms is what matters with the geometry. And now this nitrogen has one lone pair. So now I'm looking at that. So I scan and I say, okay, I, I need two X's and one lone pair. And that is the one right above it. It's either known as bent or angular. Pause the video if you just want to write this down, but that's going bye-bye. So this one would be bent. Generally, you would see it as bent. Nobody really calls it angular. And that would be the shape for this one. Now we just need to find the hybridization for the nitrogen. Once again, these nitrogens are identical to each other. So whatever nitrogen is the first one, the other nitrogen is going to be the same hybridization. Now, hybridization comes down to this. These are your sp, sp2, sp3, sp3d, and sp3d2. And the easy way to remember hybridization is just know that these link up with the total number of letters that are in the hybridization. So for example, sp3 has one S and three P's. That's a total of four letters. If you have an SP2, that's one S and two P's, that's a total of three letters. And the number of letters corresponds with the number of things that are around that element. And one thing is classified as either one single bond, one thing is one double bond. Even though there's two lines, it's still classified as one thing. A triple bond is one thing, and a lone pair is one thing. So let's look at this nitrogen. What is going on around that nitrogen? Well, it's got one single bond, that's one thing. It's got another single bond, that's two things. It's got one more single bond, that's three things. And it's got the lone pair. That's four things. So for each one nitrogen, because they're identical, four things, four letters, these are both sp3 hybridized. And that's the, your hybridization for the nitrogens here. And now let's do it for this one. And just like before, if I cut this right down the middle, these nitrogens are identical. So they're going to have the same hybridization. What's going on with maybe this nitrogen? Let's see, it's got a single bond, that's one thing. It's got a double bond, a double bond, even though it's two letters, that's classified as one thing, and a lone pair. That's three total things. So now I say three things, three letters. That is SP2, and that's the hybridization of each nitrogen. So they have different shapes, and because they have different shapes, they have different hybridizations. And that's it for this one. What'd you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to helping you with more questions. 
If you wouldn't mind, please hit that subscribe button just so that the word gets out there in the YouTube universe that this channel exists. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers and my brother and I, we thank you so much from the bottom of my hearts that, you know, you made this channel possible. We keep producing the videos, you keep watching them. You know, what, what, what better can that bring, right? So thank you so much for all the support and let's just keep learning. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.